A very good Tuesday morning to you. You are watching What in the Morning, your favorite breakfast show. We do this every Monday to Friday between 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Today being Tuesday, it is Entrepreneurship Tuesday. It's about time we let you know what the young people are out here doing to make ends meet and to empower other people. And with us in studio, we have a, we have a group uh, which is Power Moja Initiative. And they're making us know today and they're teaching the rest of us today to see the opportunity in the challenge. So today... We are going to be having a small conversation about what they're doing for all the youths that are, uh, what can I say, unserved, unserved? Underserved. Underserved. <laughs> hey, okay, big I'm words. So all the underserved. <laughs> if, you're, if you're from the slums, if you've not been able maybe to get a proper education and you feel like, oh, you're, you're, you're a bit stuck in life, well, Pamoja Initiative is here with you. So we, we are here in studio with the founder and the senior facilitator, one Jesse Jackson and Titus Courier. Please say good morning to the Why in the Morning family for the first time. And my name is Hilda Wadi. By the way, good morning, wife family. Mm -hmm. uh, very glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. All right. Good morning, wife family. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Looking forward for an interesting session. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what? So what? So what was the idea behind this initiative? What inspired this initiative? What was it about the youth that you saw that uh, that, that that made you feel like we need to do something for these people? What happened? Uh, first of all, uh, I grew up in Madare, mm -hmm. and uh, like any other marginalized area, mm -hmm. there are a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. especially connected to young people. Mm -hmm. And uh, through those challenges I went through, mm -hmm. I didn't want uh, the same challenges to befell uh, the upcoming youth. Mm -hmm. And that's why I decided to start Pamoja Initiative, mm -hmm. uh, basically to uh, challenge young people to look at the opportunities, mm -hmm in those challenges that they are going through. Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of challenges in the community. So what are those challenges? Uh, issues to do with employment, mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. Issues to do with hygiene, environment. I issues to do with crime. Issues to do with drugs. Uh, as you know that uh, Madare uh, is like the capital of um, uh, uh, Changa and other Bruce. Oh. So mm -hmm. uh, the youth they don't have so many opportunities mm -hmm. uh, to really develop their skills or mm -hmm. earn a good uh, living. Mm -hmm. So what we do as Pamoja Initiative is that we look at these biggest uh, challenges in the community mm -hmm. and we, we uh, come up together with young people, develop solutions, mm -hmm. and we engage these young people to implement those solutions. Mm -hmm. So we have programs in uh, different primary schools, different high schools, mm -hmm. and also we work with the youth that have finished school because we want to, to make sure that every facet of the community is touched by our work. So what is your age bracket? Because I'm hearing, are they those in school or those outside school? What is the age bracket for the youths that you are you're particularly targeting? Mainly we, we target people who have just finished high school oh, and are uh -huh. transitioning to university mm -hmm. or they are not doing anything in between because mm -hmm. also university education is very expensive. Yes. Uh, so we try to tap into them because mm -hmm. they have a lot of idle time during that time. You mm -hmm. know, school is a system. Mm -hmm. You wake up at a certain time, you go to lunch at a certain time, and then you go to bed at a certain time. Mm -hmm. So once you are out there, you are free and mm -hmm. a lot can happen. Yeah. So we try to tap them. Uh, we give them skills, mm -hmm. we give them tools, mm -hmm. we train them to be uh, to be local mm -hmm. community leaders, but mm -hmm. also at the same time to think globally. Mm -hmm. So we also teach them about being a good global citizen, you know, mm -hmm. taking care of the, of the environment they live in, mm -hmm. knowing very well that it affects the outside world. Mm -hmm. uh, and through that, that's how we come up with some solutions, some programs that they go and facilitate in different primary schools mm -hmm. and high schools. So that's the connection that we have. Okay, speaking of facilitation, the senior facilitator is here. He has mentioned a certain group of people who are involved maybe in drugs, or they've given up, or they're in crime, and what have you. How do you get those individuals to want to make, uh, what do you call it, a 180 degree turn in life and decide, wow, now I want to be a productive citizen. How do you pull them out of the quagmire? Okay. Uh Having, be, having been raised in Madari community, uh, a product of uh, such organization, a community-based organization, I underwent my high school with a scholarship program. Mm -hmm. I saw it was that most of my uh, schoolmates, primary schoolmates, the, the girls and the boys, were not able to make it to high-level education. So I saw it was, what can I do for the community, or what can I give back to the community? Mm -hmm. So I came back, I, like, I was like, with this information and the knowledge that I have from university, high school, mm -hmm. what can I do? 
can I give it back to the community? Mm -hmm. So uh, I started facilitating. And lucky enough, the organization was already there, Pomoji Initiative. Mm -hmm. What was there it was just manpower that was needed. So we came in, like I've been a first data for more than four years right now. Oh. Yeah, so it's been a good experience, that exposure. Mm -hmm. Like holding your younger brothers who are down here, telling them that there's something good out of this life. There's something How do you convince them? That is what I'm curious. Because no, no. some of them end up in jail, then yeah. they come out, then they want to rehabilitate themselves. Or they just don't want to listen. At that point, there's a lot of influence. So how do you get them to listen to you? I'm very it's, curious. It's, it's, it's a living testimony. Like you get to see the way the lives have changed like we have various many facilitators who have gone through the process like we have sexual education they have not dropped out of school they are busy in schools they are busy giving out uh, facilitation with their life how they have overcome mm -hmm. what they are going through like uh, <coughs> basically uh, it's it's uh, it's a testimony mm -hmm. what we go through in the slums we mm -hmm. have been able to walk away through all those challenges, mm -hmm. uh, having a successful life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Okay, Mr. Fauda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hey, well, you've mentioned some challenges such as unemployment and uh, lack of opportunities. So what do you do? What opportunities are these you create for them? Do you, do you help them uh, create their own businesses? Or do you help them get jobs? What exactly happens? Like if I, if I decided maybe I'm a youth somewhere and I'm feeling lost somewhere in Madari and I wanted to join Pamoja Initiative because I'm unemployed and, I, and, I, and I'm just there. Let me put it like that. And maybe I can't afford to go to university. So do I come and expect you to teach me how to start my own business or do you get me a job what exactly happens uh, actually uh, I, I basically do nothing just mm -hmm. <laughs> you do nothing. Yeah, because uh, the youth they do everything themselves oh, so wow. what we do is that mm -hmm. we provide that environment because mm -hmm. personally I've been lucky to travel a little bit mm -hmm. around the world and mm -hmm. learn uh, a few skills in, in terms of how do you work as a team mm -hmm. how do you collaborate with other people how do you oh. communicate mm -hmm. how do you solve uh, conflicts mm -hmm. when they arise mm -hmm. so when you bring those skills mm -hmm. then you challenge the mindset of the youth wow. because the youth normally what they do is that they mostly complain mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> instead of looking at okay there's a challenge here mm -hmm. how can i uh, shift my solution. mindset mm -hmm. and then become the solution mm -hmm. at the same time uh, deal with the challenge and also create a living out of that mm. so yeah, we, we don't train them to start a business. Mm -hmm. we, we train you to look at what, what is bothering you around you. Mm -hmm. And then from that, you can find a solution. And once you find a solution, mm -hmm. then you can communicate with other people, bring other people on board, fundraise, mm -hmm. find resources. Mm -hmm. But also, there are a lot of resources yeah. also in the community. Yeah. So what can you start with what you have? And then from there, other people will see what you are doing mm -hmm. and they'll come on board and that's what I've, I've been doing because like I told you mm -hmm. I came from Adare mm -hmm. and right now I'm working with people from somewhere in Bangkok mm -hmm. uh, who are supporting what we are doing today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it was not easy to get to those people but mm -hmm. through what we have been doing mm -hmm. in a very small way mm -hmm. they have seen that this is a good thing that uh, they are doing and we need to support these guys Oh, so I'm hearing uh, there's a lot of life skills that you're teaching. People should stop to get out of that uh, block, mind block, yeah, that they that, can't. So that, that now when they are able to interact with others, and they'll see the opportunities and be able to make use of them. That's a very good summary. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah. um, I'm hearing you have a conference that's, oh, sorry, a program that's uh, set to come up between the 24th, the 24th and the 25th of this month. Yeah. Can you please let us know a little bit about that? Uh, basically, it's called Roka Leadership Program mm -hmm. uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. We have done another conference uh, in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a partnership between uh, the Jump Foundation, mm -hmm. an organization based in uh, uh, Beijing and mm -hmm. also in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what they do is that they work with young people to, uh, to use experiential education to inspire oh. them, to give them skills, mm -hmm. to enhance collaboration. What's experiential education? 
Uh, experiential education is where you put uh, people in situations mm -hmm. so that they can learn for themselves. You know, the traditional learning, mm -hmm. that's the opposite. Mm -hmm. The traditional learning is where you go to class and then the teacher gives you all the information. Oh. But in experiential education, mm -hmm. a facilitator comes in the room, mm -hmm. gives some instructions and lets you do the experience mm -hmm. and you learn from it. Oh, okay. So every experience is different. Mm -hmm. the, what you do with this group today is mm -hmm. not the same with what the outcome of another group. Mm -hmm. And that's why we say it's a, it's a lot of experience. I can't stand up for that <laughs> explanation. Now you can carry on with the leadership yeah. program. So with JUMP, uh, we did it in 20, 2016 together mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the last two, three years, we have had challenges mm -hmm. uh, in fundraising. Uh, but right now, 2019, uh, luckily, uh, Jump got uh, a funding mm -hmm. from one of their supporters mm -hmm. and they decided uh, we need to do it again. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that um, they have a lot of tools, mm -hmm. they have a lot of uh, learning materials mm -hmm. and for us as Pamoja we have the facilitators, we have the local team, mm -hmm. we have the local connections. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we take uh, the facilitators for two-day training. Mm -hmm. uh, in those trainings there are workshops, uh, we also visit organizations mm -hmm. in Madare that mm -hmm. are doing amazing work so mm -hmm. that these young people can also get inspired. Mm -hmm. uh, they can also learn about their challenges, mm -hmm. about their success, mm -hmm. and also about why, why they started the organization. Mm -hmm. And then on the second day, we have uh, some people who come to do training, uh, and then as well as uh, something we call open space uh, mm -hmm. conference, mm -hmm. whereby we have uh, workshops running around and people can easily join any workshop oh. okay it, it's also a very new model how big is this team no i'm, I'm, I'm uh, surprised how big and how, how long has it been uh the the the, the team that is running ruka uh -huh. uh, is only five of us uh -huh. but we work with uh, we are working with uh, ruka uh -huh. 2016 uh -huh. uh, participants mm -hmm. who we are going to train to be the facilitators. Oh, uh -huh. So 10 of them mm -hmm. have, have been recruited. Mm -hmm. They're going to be uh, facilitating mm -hmm. in the conference. So basically, like I told you, mm -hmm. so we brought them in as participants. Mm -hmm. Now we are going to bring them as facilitators. Mm -hmm. And that's the journey. That, that's how Pamoja and Jump work because we want we don't want center to have like a power mm -hmm. re revolving like one center. Mm -hmm. We believe that leadership should go. It's like a ripple effect. Mm. So it should go and go and go. So next week we are training them so that they will be leading the, mm -hmm. the conferences. Mm -hmm. And then the good thing is that after the two-day conference, groups will emerge mm -hmm. that will come up with ideas for a community impact project. Mm -hmm. And there's 100,000 shillings mm -hmm. for the group or the groups that will emerge with the best idea mm -hmm. and then they'll be given the seed funding mm -hmm. so that they can start those initiatives mm -hmm. anywhere in Nairobi mm -hmm. because we are working with uh, marginalized youth from different parts of Nairobi. That's a good way to keep people motivated. Yeah. Put some money in their pocket. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so um, what, um, what, mo what motivates you? What keeps you going? What keeps you so passionate about Pamoja? Like why? Like do you feel like you never stop? Or what keeps you so grounded in this? Maybe, I don't know, why, why are you... <laughs> why are you, yes, why are you strong, Pamoja strong? What keeps you going? So, to say, what's keeping me going, what's mm. motivating me, or my drive yes. towards this Pamoja yes. thing, yeah. is that uh, I get a chance to also tell uh, a certain youth, a certain friend, a certain, my younger brother, my younger sister, mm -hmm. to also that, uh, to tell him that you can make it in life, uh, like, mm -hmm. uh, the process that we went through, Madar Madar is not all about bad things, but also good good stuff can be found inside. We mm -hmm. have uh, university graduates, we have those uh, top celebrities, footballers, good footballers, mm -hmm. and like seeing these testimonies all over mm -hmm. make me like wanna tell those people who are using like uh, they are under influence of drugs, mm -hmm. maybe school dropouts. These girls that think they cannot make it. Mm -hmm. This drive me, I, I like. I need to empower them to make it and be like you here, present wow. on a TV. So that's that's what keeps me going. All right, that's yeah. a very noble move. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I just talk a little bit yes, why. Please, uh, one please. of the reason is someone like Jesse who mm -hmm. is seated next to me because. I can see the transformation. Uh, he was a junior facilitator, mm -hmm. now he's a senior facilitator. Mm -hmm. Now we are serving in the same committee, organizing a big conference. Mm -hmm. So just to see that transition, uh, it keeps me motivated because right now I'm working with 
different youth from all over Nairobi. Mm. And when you interact with them... I was just about to ask you if it's only in Madare or it's... No, no. Well. the organization is based in Madare, uh -huh. but right now the conference uh, works with uh, young people from different parts of Nairobi, okay. but from marginalized areas. All right. And uh, every day you meet these young people, mm -hmm. they have a lot of hope, a mm -hmm. lot of potential, mm -hmm. a lot of insights. Mm -hmm. And it inspires me even more to uh, find resources, uh, go out there, network, and, and make sure that this young potential doesn't disappear mm -hmm. and, and we regret. Uh, because, as you know, there are a lot of extrajudicial killings. Yes. Uh, a lot of young people are ending up into drugs. It's not their fault. It's mm -hmm. because they don't have anything to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know the percentages are, uh, that are out there connected to jobs. The youth are educated, they have a lot of uh, uh, passion to do something good, mm -hmm. but they don't know how or they don't know where to go. Mm -hmm. And that's why Ruka is there for them. Wow, so how do, you, how do you get your initiative out there? How do you get your recruits? Like now you've said that you're, for your leadership program you want to work or you've been working with people from all over, mm -hmm. uh, all over different counties all over the country. How do they get to know of Palm, of Palmoja uh, initiative? What do you guys do to make sure that the word spreads? Especially in a place where people like for example maybe don't even have the money to have phones to be on social media. How do you make sure the information spreads? It's actually our social media manager, he can... <laughs> yes, please answer the question. <laughs> he can talk about yeah. mm -hmm. uh, Like, how do we get to reach these youths yes. from non-formal community yes. within Nairobi? Yes. It's, uh, like, very simple. Uh, the first uh, 2016 uh, RUKA conference was a little bit headache. Mm -hmm. We had to go, like, we had to travel to these non-formal communities, like, uh, all over center, like Kibera, uh, Gidurai. No, oh, how over. safe are you? <laughs> so, so, uh, so it's just trust you know, mm -hmm. once you come from a ghetto, <laughs> <laughs> I see, see. there's no, no, there's no right. any other ghetto that yeah. <laughs> So uh, mm -hmm. we had to travel, uh, we had posters appealed everywhere at youth centers, mm -hmm. also at uh, Nairobi uh, One Stop. Yes. So like each and every youth had this information, like uh, all of our social media, we shared with uh, uh, leaders within the communities. Mm. Now come 2019, it was like uh, easy because we have uh, a Ruka participant. They were like our ambassadors. Oh. Uh, so they were they shared the posters all over and also still went to these uh, community-based centers all in these non-formal uh, cent uh, centers in different areas. Mm -hmm. And then what we did was uh, create a Google form where people could apply online. So it was an online Thing. And right now we have 200 applicants mm -hmm. and that have come in to apply for this leadership conference. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> All right, let's talk about uh, maybe what's next when it comes to Pamoja Initiative. Like, what can we expect from you guys? Maybe in the next five years, two years, what can we expect? What difference can we expect? Before I ask you about uh, any significant people that we know who you can see, yes, they have benefited from this initiative and they've come out strong. So before we answer that, what mm. can we expect from you guys in the next five years, maybe? Um, uh, we, we hope to have a bigger Ruka experience. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we are looking at about um, um, 60 to 100 participants, mm -hmm. depending on the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, but we hope that every year we'll have at least 100 participants. So th those are like another 500 in mm -hmm. the next five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, this, this is all over Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So we want to create a critical mass of young people who can look at the biggest challenges in their community, mm -hmm. turn them into opportunities, mm -hmm. create themselves jobs, mm -hmm. as well as provide uh, jobs to other people in the community. Wow. Once we do that, uh, we'd be very happy, mm -hmm. but it's not very easy because, like I said, we come from Madare, we don't have a lot of resources. What is the government doing about this um, when it comes to initiatives? Are, are you supported? What happens? Uh, what I would say is that, uh, we have tried mm -hmm. to get support uh, mm -hmm. from different uh, departments in the government. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still an ongoing uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, we were hoping to get someone from the presidency to mm -hmm. come and talk about uh, the big four mm -hmm. agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, we were not very uh, uh, lucky, mm -hmm. but we are hoping that uh, before the conference mm -hmm. day is mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. hopefully we'll get someone. Yeah, Nyambane, we. We, we hope that will show up. Uh, <laughs> so um, 
uh, we are hoping uh, that will be supported. Mm -hmm. And another thing, other than the government, mm -hmm. uh, like I said, we are hoping to get 100 participants. Wow. Right now, what we can afford is about 50 to 60 participants. Mm -hmm. uh, we are hoping that local uh, uh, companies mm -hmm. and individuals mm -hmm. can come in and support us. And support, it doesn't necessarily mean finance. financial. Yeah. You can provide t-shirts, you can yeah. provide beverages, yeah. you can provide halls, you can provide mm -hmm. transportation for our participants because they're coming from all over Nairobi. We have to pay for their transport, we have to pay, to pay for their food, we have to pay for their t-shirts, stationery. Uh -huh. You can provide printing. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that, uh, because this youth will mm -hmm. help this country. Mm -hmm. And people like the Jam Foundation are mm. not even Kenyan. Mm. They are based in, in China. Yes, in they're Beijing, investing in our own and, future. And in Thailand. <laughs> and then they're investing in us. So it yeah. should be uh, an inspiration mm -hmm. for local people mm -hmm. to come on board and support these kind of initiatives. Mm -hmm. So we are looking forward to anyone mm -hmm. who would be interested mm -hmm. uh, to come on board. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an amazing coordinator. Mm -hmm. Her name is Sylvia. Mm -hmm. She'll be waiting. Right. <laughs> okay, so the door is open. The invitation is open. Yes. So Jackson, can you please give us your social media handles because it's about time we conclude uh, this interview. So yes, please, can you let them know where they can find you, Pamoja, so, if they wanted to join or apply? If you want to join or apply or know about Pamoja Initiative, uh, we are we are on all social media platforms mm -hmm. like at Pamoja, Facebook at Pamoja, Twitter at Pamoja, uh, Instagram. And also our website is pamoja, P with double A, mm -hmm. moja.org. Yeah, that's our uh, website. All right, Karibuni Sana, everybody, for all of you who are underserved. Yes. 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 Please, please check out Pamoja Initiative. However, I would like to talk, I would like to uh, as we as we go, I'd like to really, really enable you guys to answer this particular question on who can we say is a person of of, of significance who has come out of your hands? Any anybody? Any testimony or even just a statistic? How many people have you empowered? Let me put it like that. Uh, as Pamoja Initiative, mm. uh, I would say more than. More than a thousand. Wow! Because, like Jesse has said, uh, it's a, it's a. We have, we have, we have young people mm -hmm. that we train, mm -hmm. and then they go and teach in schools, mm -hmm. in in primary schools. Mm -hmm. So in one year, we reach about like two hundred kids wow. in different, different and formal schools mm -hmm. in Madare. Mm -hmm. uh, but also as Ruka, mm -hmm. the people who went for Ruka 2016, mm -hmm. some of them went and started their own organizations. Mm -hmm. And now those organizations are also reaching young people. Mm -hmm. So for us, uh, we, we say that uh, the most important thing is the experience, mm -hmm. not really the, the numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, because once you give a young person a skill, mm -hmm they will use that skill for the rest of their lives. Wow. So that's why you're more built on the life skills and whatever. It will sustain yeah. them even yeah. to and, go and forward. It goes and goes and goes. So it's a ripple effect. Wow. Asante Nisana for coming to studio today. And congratulations for those whose lives you have changed. Thank yes, you. yes, yes, yes. So it's about time we conclude this uh, interview. Thank you so much for coming through. They've, they've enabled us to see the opportunity and the challenges around you. So make sure you do subscribe to Pavoja. Make sure you do attend the initiatives. They'll be following up. So yes, thank you so much. My name is Hilda Wadidi. It's about time I paved the way for Barry Moses. Then you can come in with the next big interview. Peace.